Hello and welcome to Crime Watch Daily Updates. I'm your host, Anna Garcia. Food has a special way of uniting people. And in Detroit, Michigan, no one exemplified that better than chef and U.S. Marine veteran Douglas Calhoun. He was the life of the party, both inside the kitchen and out. Then Chef Doug just disappeared. He was last seen on May 31st of 2017. And mysteriously, he just didn't show up to some paid catering gigs. He even missed a flight to St. Louis to cater a wedding. Family and friends grew worried, and so they reported him missing. Investigators learned that on June 1st of 2017, Doug went to a home in Detroit's Brightmoor neighborhood where he reportedly paid a woman who he contacted on Backpage.com for sex. When he asked to have sex without a condom, the woman, who was 17 years old, refused. The two started arguing, and the girl's boyfriend, Travon Baskerville, came out and shot Chef Doug. The woman ultimately led police to a vacant garage where she and Baskerville left Doug's body in a trash can. He was found July 7th of 2017, 37 days after he was killed. The 17-year-old also told police that Baskerville forced her into sex work starting when she was just 16. The Wayne County prosecutor charged Baskerville on September 1st of 2017 with murder and human trafficking related crimes. He was convicted in July of 2018 and sentenced a month later to 120 years in prison. Let's take a look back at the case of a talented chef whose life was taken far too soon. Chef Doug, sharp the tech. When DJ Calhoun walked into a room, people took notice. Hey, I'm dripping sauce. Hey, we got one question hey, for you. you without calling me. I'm dripping sauce. Water hey, hey, she was, she was dripping sauce, baby. Hey. He was always the life of the party. Yeah! Even if you've given something where he wasn't invited, he's there. But DJ was always invited, and for a very good reason. Yeah, There's going to be some good food. Dana Phillips says her younger brother could turn any ordinary meal into something extraordinary. He's one of the guys who, if there was no salad dressing in the house or if there was no special sauce of some sort, he would make it up. After serving his country as a U.S. Marine... He was very proud to be a Marine. DJ returned home and started serving up his delicious cuisine. Before I knew it, DJ had become Chef Doug. Chef Doug's catering company was red hot. His food famous throughout Detroit and beyond. He's traveled to different states to do um, weddings. Very beautiful settings, very beautiful tables. Chef Doug means something to him, means something to the city. So on June 1st, when Chef Doug missed a big catering gig, his sister instantly knew something was wrong. His best friend calls me and says, you talk to your brother. He's supposed to be catering for a comedy show. And the guys who are the promoters are looking for him. I said, oh, well, let me call you right back. When Dana couldn't get her brother to answer his phone, she tried texting him. And my last text to him says, boy, you better call me as soon as you get this message. But for the first time ever, her messages went unanswered. No one had heard from Chef Dog since around 3.30 in the morning. And he calls his best friend and says, yeah, I'm home and uh, I'll talk to you tomorrow. That phone call followed a Thursday night on the town with his buddies. They're having a good time. They're popping bottles and, you know, eating and drinking and DJ as normal is the life of the party. But now it was Friday night and no one could find him. Dana went right to police. It was my understanding that you had to wait 24 hours before you could make a police report, but maybe because I was so adamant about it being this ain't right. So they took the police report. The following day, Chef Doug was supposed to fly to St. Louis to cater a wedding. He's not at the airport. He didn't get on the plane. His cousin Camilla Henderson says that's when the family really started to panic. He doesn't miss anything because that's what he built his reputation on. Then a troubling find. When his family used OnStar to locate his SUV, it had been abandoned in the neighborhood of Brightmoor, nowhere near his home. In a vacant lot in this terrible neighborhood. Car doors open, hatch was open. 
Complete strangers joined DJ's family and friends to search for the popular chef. I couldn't keep sitting on my hands. Maybe he's somewhere under a brush of trees or something. But all the searches came up empty. Then Dana's daughter made a startling discovery when she found her uncle's online passwords and accessed his bank account. She told me that his debit card was being used. James McDonald is a homicide detective with the Detroit Police Department. We go out to these uh, businesses and we start, you know, looking at the surveillance footage and you see his car being used and it's not Douglas Calhoun. His family didn't know it yet, but Detective McDonald had already uncovered a big clue in the case using the chef's cell phone records. We identified his last contact number and we recognized that at 3, 4 o'clock in the morning he's talking to this person and then all of a sudden the communication stops. Turns out the phone call DJ made to his best friend wasn't his last call of the night. That is what turned this into not a missing person, but more of a, a victim of a crime. When the man known simply as Chef Doug disappeared on June 1st, everyone, including the cops, feared the worst. When we found out that he, he, he missed his appointments for catering, then we knew, we knew something was wrong. Cell phone records revealed that around 3 in the morning, the ex-Marine made a call from the Detroit neighborhood of Brightmoor. When cops traced the call, it wasn't to a person, it was to a business. This was a number that was affiliated with Backpage. Backpage is a website where people sell products and services. You can be anybody on Backpage. You can do anything on there and be misleading on it. So there was no way to tie an individual to that telephone number. How do we identify this number to this person when this number is connected to all these different states? Detective McDonald spent hours going through call logs, looking at every call made or received by the back page number. I come upon a number that belongs to a pizza place called Crazy Joe's Pizza. And lo and behold, it's in the Brightmore area. The detective realizes the number Doug called was to a pizza joint. Detective McDonald headed over, hoping someone would remember the caller. We get here, we walk in inside, and we go to an employee, and my first question is, hey, do you guys keep good phone records? Lucky for him, they do. He knew the order they called in, the day they called it in, the time they called it in, and he goes, and we delivered it. The phone number now had an address. Crazy Joe's delivered food to a home on Burgess Street. Well, I mean, this is, this is the needle in the haystack. Now I had a direction to go in my investigation. But before heading over, Detective McDonald and his partner needed to come up with a story. I can't tell him there for a homicide. So when a young woman answered the door, he told her he was searching for a missing person. We show a, a random picture of, of, of no one significant. And all that was just to, to, make, to make contact with her. He then showed her the back page number and claimed his missing person had called it before disappearing. The look on her face was, it was blank. She said she didn't recognize the number, so he asked her to do him a favor. I said, can you grab your phone, go through it, type in this number, and see if a contact name pops up. She slammed the door in my face. After a couple of minutes, the girl came back and agreed to go down to the police station for questioning. It was more about just finding out who she was, who she lived with, how long she was living there, because I wanted to establish that she was there in April. She told detectives she'd been living in the house since March with her boyfriend, Trayvon Baskerville. Now I have enough probable cause to go back to the house with a search warrant. When they returned, no one was home, but the search warrant allowed cops to go inside anyway. But what they found left them stunned. We find suspected blood on a mattress, a lot of blood. That suggests somebody was bleeding pretty heavily. During their search, the young lady who lives at the house walks in. What are you guys doing here? I basically say, hey, listen, we need to talk again. And she voluntarily goes back with me. After about seven hours, she admitted that Chef Doug was at the house on the morning of June 1st. She also said he didn't make it out alive. She tells us, you know, you might want to check into my boyfriend, Trayvon Baskerville. Trayvon Baskerville had a couple of felony warrants out for his arrest and was immediately taken into custody. He was now the prime suspect 
I asked him, did he know anything about the disappearance of Douglas Calhoun? And his answer was like, no, I don't know what you're talking about. But DNA tests confirmed the blood found in his house belonged to Chef Doug. Cops knew who could help them find the body. You already told me he, was, he died in that house. Where's his body? In exchange for immunity, Trayvon's girlfriend agreed to tell them everything. We decided just to put her in the car, and we kind of just said, hey, take us to where Douglas Calhoun is at. She identified the garage and said, hey, he's going to be in a trash can in the, in the back of the garage. Right where she said it was at, it was there. In all his years investigating homicides, Detective McDonald says he'd never seen something so callous. It was just mind-boggling how some someone a human can take another human put him in a trash can roll him to a vacant garage and just leave him there can't imagine why anyone would do this horrendous thing to my cousin and when chef doug's family learned the reason why he had been killed they were in utter disbelief he wanted to do it without a condom he being doug yes Trayvon's girlfriend claims the chef agreed to pay her $50 for oral sex, but then wanted more. And what did you do at that point? I told him no. She says he then asked for his money back, and that's when Trayvon came out with a gun. Them two started going back and forth. What does back and forth mean? Like they was arguing back and forth about the money. When Chef Doug asked Trayvon to step outside, she says her boyfriend shot him in the back. Afterwards, they both hid the body. Where does Trey put the body? Into the dumpster. Okay. Do you help him do that? Yes. Why? Because I was scared. At nightfall, the trash container was moved to the garage of a nearby vacant home. They threw him away like it was trash. 37 days later, Chef Doug was finally found. We were right there in Brightmore community. We must have walked past town at least five or six times. On the day of his arraignment, the accused killer sat stone-faced as the first-degree murder charge was read. The expression was like, I don't, I don't care about the murder charge. But when the judge said he was also being charged with human trafficking. His head popped up and he, his eyes got real wide. Human trafficking, where do you, where do you get that charge from? They got that from a 17-year-old girlfriend who claims Trayvon forced her into prostitution at age 16, then confiscated all the money she earned. She claims he refused to let her get a regular job. Kept saying, why you want to work? You don't want to work for the white man. She's not a victim as far as I'm concerned. She's selling herself. Chef Doug's sister believes the teen had other choices. Just like she went home after all this happened, she could have gone home before this happened. And not only that, it happened and you allowed it to go on and on for 37 days. I know sex trafficking is real and I know I'm angry. So I don't, I don't know that I'm, I'm projecting that anger and not giving her the benefit of the doubt. As for Trayvon Baskerville... Just a, a piece of trash who manipulates, degrades women. If convicted for the murder of Douglas Calhoun, Trayvon Baskerville will spend the rest of his life behind bars. For Dana, the punishment would not fit the crime. I wish we had the death penalty. I do, because I don't want to work every day to pay for him to eat.